What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 7 of my NHL 20 Detroit Red Wings Franchise Mode Series. As you can see there, the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup last year. We actually lost to them in the first round. I don't think we've made it to the conference final yet, so hopefully this season we actually have some playoff luck. Unfortunately, we have a ton of contracts to work through. As you can see there, Tampa Bay went through us, Montreal, Carolina, and Anaheim. Every single series going to 7 before winning the Stanley Cup. So, uh, good on them, obviously. Eiserman's former team there. Hopefully that can be us this year. Like I was mentioning, we have a ton of contracts we have to sort through. Dreisaitl needs a new deal, gonna be getting a raise for sure from 8.5 million. Doesn't want the extension, but I'm gonna do everything I can to keep him. If not, just try and sign him out of free agency. A 94 overall player, like we can't afford to lose our best player. So I'm thinking for cap space, we don't have a lot. We also have to give Shane Wright a contract, 90 overall, going from entry level to probably $9 million, I'm guessing. Uh, short right now, he wants 10 million. We have about 14, it says. so. It's going to be tough. I'm thinking we're going to lose at least a couple guys. For sure, Tyler Bertuzzi here, pending UFA. I'm thinking we'll probably trade him for any pick we can at the draft. Hopefully, a third rounder or something for some team for negotiating rights. Also, we probably have to still shed more salary cap. I'm looking at probably Mantha or Zadina. Zadina's 88 overall, making $9 million, which is a bit expensive, I think, for an 88. Uh, Mantha's $3 million less. Or sorry, four million less, three overall lower. Valino at 87 is making two. Raymond's making a million less at 90. And like I said, like you want to keep your best players in dry saddle and Shane Wright. So we're just gonna have to make some changes here. Luckily though, Zadina, obviously we can trade and get some guys back. We still do have some options. Pretty optimistic. I think you know eventually this team, we're gonna get lucky in the playoffs, we're gonna come through. So I'll actually just send to the draft right now. I don't think we have like a very high pick at all, but the top five picks are all just like medium elite guys. Nothing too special. There are actually a couple goalies guaranteed medium elite that I'm gonna try and snag like fourth or fifth round. So right now we'll just send our pick, pick number 26. Hopefully we can get somebody here. We'll take a look at those top five guys. 80. Okay, this is actually this is probably the worst draft yet. Aginla though, if anyone overall medium elite falls to seven, that's very surprising. Usually top five is always medium elite, and the fact that there was no one above an 80 like. This is probably the worst draft yet. I know I said that like a couple seasons ago looking at one of them, but this one's pretty bad. So right now, no one great that we know of that's supposed to be picked soon. Right there, you guys can see the two goalies, guaranteed medium elite. You also have this defenseman who could be medium elite. Um, I don't think we should, like, do we take him right now? Honestly, maybe, like, there's not a lot here. Guaranteed medium top six. Our scouts like this guy, though. Oh man, the goalies like we're for sure gonna get at least one of them, hopefully both. Honestly, I'm thinking we reach a bit. Like, if this defense is medium elite, it's a great pick. Medium top four, it's honestly still pretty solid. End of the first round. Our next pick guys is number 90, and the first medium elite goalie is projected to go 91, so I'm gonna risk it here and sim to pick 90. I don't see a uh Ollie, I don't think that was him. I think we're okay. Let's take a look. Um there he is, he's available, okay, let's see. I don't think his ETA for NHL is like five years, so he's probably low rated. 57, that's actually higher than I expected, and obviously for a third rounder, it's a very good pick. Also guys, our scout recommendation there in Bushers in the first round is two overall higher than our defenseman, medium top six, but honestly, pretty much like the exact same in terms of value. So we're sending out our next pick, which is actually 95. So uh, we have two third rounders. I think we can wait on the other goalie. Might be ch like time to take a chance. This dude playing in the Dell, hopefully no one knows about him, maybe he's actually sick, let's go for it. And low top 9, kind of rough. And right now guys, I'm trying to trade a 5th and a 6th for the Florida Panthers 5th round pick, just because uh, the goalie that we want is going to be going around 140, so I want to make sure we can get him, and Florida does accept. Also too, I actually just remembered we need to trade Tyler Bertuzzi, probably should have done that earlier, I don't know how I just straight up forgot, but yeah, as you can see, not a lot of value Penny UFA. I'm thinking we can probably get like a fourth rounder next year. Definitely want to try and trade him out of conference. So maybe LA. I feel like he would thank us going to LA. Um, could even get a fourth rounder this year maybe for him. Uh, LA would have too many skaters. All right, so instead we're trying to trade him to Seattle here. This is actually for a fourth rounder this year. Um, we'll see what they say. Trade rejected. I mean, 85, a fourth rounder to get like, you know, first dibs. I feel like that's not too bad. Maybe they give us like a sixth rounder here. Basically gets us back the sixth rounder we gave up to move up in the draft. See what they say. Trade's accepted, so not too bad. So our next pick here, guys, number 129. Obviously going to go for that medium league goalie. As you can see, yeah, 142. We might have just missed him. Maybe would have gone with 145, but rather make sure we get him. 
49 overall, so a bit lower rated, but still medium lead in the fifth round. Very good pick. Our next pick here is number 26 in the fifth round. If we can find like a low top four defenseman, which this guy's 50 50, that'd be a great pick, I think, at this point. McNeil, come on. Low top six, so a little worse, but honestly, still not terrible value there in the fifth. Sixth pick in the sixth round, 66, next Lemieux. But we're going to go for Morris here just because hopefully he's low lead. That'd actually be pretty nice. Low top six. Again, it could be worse. And next year, guys, we're trying to make a huge trade with Dallas for Heiskanen. Obviously, like I was mentioning, we want to move Zadina. I'd like to bring in, though, another top pairing defenseman to play with Jones. 92 overall right now, 25 years old. Highly potential. He's a beast. 7.4 for the next few years is a really good contract. Mercer here has got one year left as an entry level. 81 overall just be in our bottom six. So Branstrom, essentially, Heiskanen takes over for. Moves Bean down to the second pair. He's solid, but we can move him. And then Zadina, obviously, like I said, we had to move some money. So we are saving, you know, was it $6 million here with this trade. Now, they don't have either guy on the block. They like both of our guys. Value's a bit on our side, I think. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected. Value isn't where it needs to be at all. So I think I'm going to actually move on to my second option, which is trying to go after Quinn Hughes on Vancouver. So I'm making Vancouver the same offer here for Quinn Hughes. Unfortunately, he's four overall below Heiskanen. Medium lead opposed to high lead. He is a bit cheaper there by about a million, but he's also only signed for two years opposed to three. But Nick Murphy at least is one overall higher, which helps it out a bit. So I think this one, the value is even more on our side. I'm still pretty happy with this. Sometimes I wonder like Detroit should have taken Hughes over Zadina. I think it's still a little too early to tell, but we'll see what Vancouver says. Again, we're saving, you know, six million dollars here with this trade, which will definitely help us out keeping dry settle, keeping Shane right. So here we go. Trade rejected. They're also saying the value isn't where it needs to be at all, but Looking at the trade value, I think this is a bit easier of a trade than the Dallas one, so we'll see if we can add something here. So this worked out really well. They're actually interested in all of our prospect goalies. We have four that are medium elite. I feel like we'll trade away the one we drafted last year opposed to the two we just got. So Astles, 2057. That adds a good amount of value there. And I'm like, we have so many. I think like we're gonna have to overpay a bit to get Hughes, save the money, but we need to do this. I still like this trade. Come on, like look at the value. It's double on our side. Please say yes. Trades rejected isn't sufficient at all. All right guys, so since the Vancouver trade didn't seem to be working, I'm gonna try something different here, offering Philadelphia Zadina for Bobby Brink. Brink's 87 overall at 23 years old, medium top six, but really good contract there, making 5.2 for the next three years. Stats as well, awesome hands and shot. Could be a bit faster, defensive stats are nice though. Zadina, one overall higher, making $4 million more. Like, we're getting a slightly worse player, but saving a ton of cap space, which is huge for us, so. See what they say. Xenia has more value than they want him. Maybe they're willing to take the extra money but upgrade a player. It also helps too that Xenia has elite potential there opposed to top six. Here we go. And trade is accepted. So honestly, I don't think that's too bad a trade for us. So we're not three sign phase here, guys. As you can see the bottom there, we have just under 18 million in cap space. Dry Saddle wants around 11 or 11.7. Thing is, doesn't want an extension, so we just have to let him go to free agency. And I think we'd actually get him a bit cheaper, maybe like 11. And then Shane right here wants 10. So 21, we're about 3 million short. My plan is to trade away Heronic, save about two and a half million. Hicketts is only one overall below him. Even Ninamaki here possibly could grow to like a 79. It's definitely gonna be really tight though in terms of making the money work because we actually have a few other guys we have to sign, but also with like signing guys, there's somebody in his place making a million right now. So you actually have a bit more cap space usually than what it says. So Droysen, I'm thinking we'll just not release till the very end so teams don't know, you know, we're not gonna sign him. Shane right here. I mean, we can save about a million on a one-year deal, but it's probably not worth it. Might as well just do the max for him. I'll offer like 9.2. I think it probably won't go through. 9.5 probably will, but we'll see what he says. So I'm just going to go position by position, kind of get a better layout. Centers are pretty much locked up. And looking at left wingers next, Peyton Krebs here needs a contract. 24.83 wants 1.9. That's actually really reasonable, uh, especially for 83 overall. Wants one year here to try to prove it. Probably be playing third line for us again, have you know a chance to get some more minutes. Smith here, I wouldn't mind being a fourth liner. And he only wants 775k, so that's a great deal actually. Gunther, I'm thinking maybe we can make the NHL team. 77 if he grows a bit. Benson, honestly just let him go at this point. Uh, these guys probably bring back Wojtka, I don't think it's quite good enough though. And look at the Red Wingers next year, all the NHL guys are locked up. Heavy Bulin here, I feel like we'll sign 2371. Low top nine, that's probably good enough. I feel like medium bottom six, they have to at least be like pretty high rated. Um, otherwise, just not worth it. All these guys too are coming in really cheap. And then defense here, like I was mentioning already, probably have to trade away Heronic just to try and bring everyone back. Sekov, Lidstrom, they're basically just AHL top guys. McIsaac's never grown. 25, 74, like it's pretty much gonna be a miracle for him to even be an NHL defenseman. Like he'll probably max out at 78 for us, which really sucks. I was hoping he'd be like a top four guy. 
uh, for whatever reason, just never worked out. And looking at our goalie situation here, Martin Jones, does want an extension, honestly, that's fine. We'll release him. Conway, there's our backup. Quite cheap, 75 k for 80. Honestly, should be fine. And so Giovanni Smith here accepted our offer, which is really awesome. I think he's going to be a solid fourth liner and super cheap. Lindstrom there accepted the offer. Again, HL top pair guy for us. More HL guys, that's awesome. So right accepted his deal. I thought 9.2 would be a bit too cheap. That's a really good deal for us, especially for the next eight years. He could definitely get up to like a 94, in which case, awesome contract. McIsaac there accepts. Payne Krebs rejects. All right. Uh, we were a little cheap on him. Probably throw like an extra 200k his way. I'll say yes. Also, guys, I forgot Joe Hicketts here needs a contract. He's kind of like our emergency six defenseman. 1.7 million though for three years. Uh, for 79. I'm just going to hope one of the AHL guys comes up. We just can't afford that. And honestly, for Krebs, I'm thinking we might qualify him. It'll leave us with 9.6. Trade Heronic. It'll put us right around 11 million, which hopefully will be enough to get Dry Saddle. So I'm going to qualify Krebs. Sign him after. Hopefully, like I said, we can get Dry Saddle still. So we're now in the free agency period here, guys. Curious to see what Dry Saddle is asking for from the free agent market. Obviously, us was 11.7. 11.9. So he said 200k less, but he wouldn't have signed it. Rantanen's also available there. Dubois. So, I mean, we have options if we can't get Dry Saddle. Although, I would like to bring Dry Saddle back. There's a couple sick forwards there. Even, is this who I think it is? Dominic Cahoon up to an 88 overall. What the hell? His stats are pretty sick. And he wants more money than Dry Saddle, Ranton, and Dubois, who are all 90 plus. That makes no sense. And there's three teams that are interested. I have no idea. He's like older as well, so I don't know what they're thinking. Surge of their 89, 10.8. Goldabin, that was the guy we drafted. Uh, I still think that was a bad trade. We made, uh, I think we've got McDonough back. Marner's UFA as well. Ratty, Verana, Josh Norris there is up to an 88. Dennis Sanko, Stutzel. Uh, he's an RFA. Tavares. The fact of ours is a free agent right now, we didn't even see him on the first page, it's just insane. Like, these free agency classes are getting nuts. Also, too, I noticed below him, Steven Stamkos is also there. You could sign both. I mean, they're mid-30s, but they're still high 80s. Like, that's pretty good. Cam Atkinson, Josh Hosang. I feel like there's going to be a lot of money spent here. We have 9.6. Obviously, we want the best guy available, Dry Saddle. So, like I was saying, we'll try and trade Heronic, even though that's going to give us, like, 11 mil. Oh, we might not be able to bring Dry Saddle back. And, I mean... As much as I like him, he hasn't gotten a ton for us. Could go Dubois. He's about a million dollars cheaper. Two years younger. He's only two overall lower. We would for sure have the money for him. So maybe we have to go that route. Just because I feel like we'll get outbid on dry settle. I'm thinking you know, we probably will offer our best offer to both. See what happens. So I think it's going to be a pretty easy trade, guys. I noticed Anaheim's interested in Heronic. Their second round picks on the block. It's pretty much the exact same value. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. I thought that was just going to be nice and easy. I'll throw a fifth on our side because it was really close. Maybe I throw a fourth on our side. I would, I would like their second more than, say, just taking a third. Okay, maybe we have to take the third. I thought that was pretty good, but he does only have one year left. I'm going to ask for a third and a sixth here. I feel like that's a bit more even. There we go. So I feel like for Heronic, one year left, not too bad. Hopefully that guy who's 77 right now grows because otherwise our 60 man's not going to be too great. And like I was mentioning, so now just our best offer, 11.2 million. So Dry Saddle, we'll give it to him. He wants seven years. We'll see what he says. And they're also going to give that offer to Dubois. Now Dubois could accept it before Dry Saddle, but I'd rather get one of them than get neither of them. I'm thinking we're going to have to give him our best offer as well. So 11.2 million for seven years, like 34. Bring in a superstar. It's worth the price. And if we miss on both, Ranton in there is only one below Dubois. We really don't need a center. We have Larkin and Wright but I'd rather have one of the two better guys. And then Cahoon, I'm not paying $12 million for an 88. Like, we just traded Zadina because it's overpriced at, what was it, $9 million for an 88. Uh, Surchev, Goldobin, I mean, I think our defense is pretty good. If we miss on Dubois and Dreisel, honestly, we can even go after Marner, and it's not, like, a big deal at all. Verana there, like, there's just so many good players. Even, like, Tavares or Stamkos wouldn't be the end of the world, and we still have a few million dollars left over. That might even be kind of a better option. Uh, curious, too, I didn't check the goalies, if anyone's really good. Carter Hart. 88 overall, 26 years old, still has that elite potential, that's nuts. Binnington, Riddick, check two ways, maybe there's somebody decent. And we have like four that are uh, meanly potential anyway, so we don't really need one. I also want to check two-way skaters here, just see if anyone decent. Vertanen is a two-way, fourth liner, 80 overall. This seems like a great contract, um, hopefully he says yes. He'd for sure make our fourth line. Like, that's insane. So I just made offers on Cassivy. Uh, 2054 low elite defenseman. Not too bad for free. Same with Williams. 2053 low top six forward. So 
Really curious here to see what Dubois and Dreisaitl say. Again, bringing in a superstar for free. That's awesome. Uh, third, third. Radulov in a second. I'm going to say no to that. Hopefully, Dreisaitl says yes. If not, hopefully we get Dubois. Uh, I believe the sign will be good. Okay, that's nice. That was a defenseman. Williams also said yes. There we go. Uh, McNeil in a fourth. I'm going to say no to that. Our AHL team, we actually have to keep our players. We're not getting anything back significant. Rattan accepts. That's a great deal. Like, eight overall. Two-way contract. Plus, like, the way he plays, he's fast, physical, perfect for the fourth line, which we needed a player for. And Dubois, are you kidding me? Doesn't think we offered him enough money. Goes with Buffalo, which means it's not looking good for Dry Saddle, but you never know. <sighs> he goes with Boston, a team in our division. Are you kidding me? He didn't want an extension, so, like, we would have had to pay him so, so much money to not go to free agency, but I thought we could have kept him. I can't believe we missed out on both. Hopefully, Ranchinen's still there. Ranchinen's not there either. Luckily, we have money. Verana, Tavares, Stamkos. I mean, like, Tavares and Stamkos aren't bad options. Tavares is a year younger and two overall higher, so I feel like he's who we go after. Two years isn't too bad. Top six is a bit worrisome. Not, 86 poise, really good defensive stats. A bit slower, but his hands and shot are still very good. I feel like he'd kind of be a nice second-line guy for us. Um, all right, I guess we go Tavares. I'm only going to do one year. It doesn't even change the money, so we'll do 8.6 there for one. Still not, a, you know, like I said, it's not terrible. It actually gives us about $3 million to maybe actually get a sixth defenseman, because right now we're looking pretty rough there. That's going to be expensive, though. Um, I'm looking at this Mickelrath guy here, RFA. He was actually drafted by Buffalo 7th overall, which is kind of nuts. Um, $2 million, I think I have to give like a second round pick or something. Third round pick, yeah. If Buffalo doesn't match that, that'd be awesome. Then we should still hopefully have enough money left to uh, sign Payton Krebs. Colorado here trying to give us Beret Belay, but we already have enough forwards, so I'm just going to decline that, especially I don't want to take on the money. Uh, Evander Kane, yeah, we're not taking on any money. Come on. Uh, first round pick for... No, again, we don't need forwards. I'm not getting on my first round pick. Come on, Tavares. Mikkelrath accepts as of now. Tavares. There we go. So, again, he's five overall below dry saddle. But, you know, he's a veteran. I don't know. I, I think the Leafs have one in this. So he's won a Stanley Cup. Maybe he can, like, show the team what needs to be done. I'm hoping here Buffalo does not match either. Give up the third round pick. And chose not to match. Are you kidding me? That is such a good deal for us. And so we still have $2 million in cap space. Going to sign Peyton Krebs right now. Wants 1.9. So all from, I don't know, 1.775. Should say yes. And kind of an interesting offer here from the Flames. Offering us Heinen, a third, a fourth, and a fifth for Domingues. A third and a fourth. Domingue's is only low top four, which isn't anything too crazy. I'm not sure his rating. Uh, 68 overall at 21 is actually not too bad. Heinen's an 80 right on. Uh, he doesn't really do too much for us. We already have Rasmussen as the fourth line center. I feel like we need to keep Domingue's just because there's four years left here. He could actually, you know, help us. We're kind of running out of prospects. <laughs> Pretty much give us the same offer there. And Carolina just traded Brett Pesci and New York Islanders for two second round picks and Matt Niskanen, who's a 78 now, so... I think they might be starting to rebuild. Also, Peyton Krebs accept their offer, so that's awesome, especially for his rating. I think, honestly, our roster's set now. Hopefully, we get a bit of growth over the summer. And I think, you know, we did lose Joy Saddle. We lost Sedina, but still, our team should be pretty solid. And looking at the captain here, guys, even though he just joined the team, giving Tavares an A there as well. Larkin, of course, still wearing the C, and then Seth Jones there, the other alternate captain. And so, throughout the start of the season here, guys, as you can see, Team Sass is still champion. It is a little bit of a worse team than last year, but I don't know, maybe somehow they'll make it better. So, Shane Wright's actually got up to a 92. I'm hoping this is the year he just takes over the NHL. Only 21 years old. Franchise potential. I'm not sure if McDavid was even this high rated at 21. 99 passing, 6 shot. He's fast. I mean, he's got Raymond as his one winger. Tavares as the other. He should just go off. Second line's pretty solid too. Got Bobby Brink, Larkin, and Valino. Valino's role is now a second liner, so I don't want him to like lose rating. 87 overall, making 2 million. It's probably the best contract in the league right now. Playing with Larkin and Brink should be solid. We got Krebs on the third line with Frederick and Mantha. I would like a better third line center, but he's only making 1.6. Maybe at the deadline we can do something, but for right now, I'll probably just have to wait it out. For Tannen, Rasmussen, and Smith, I think it's a pretty solid fourth line. All of them have really good physical stats or something we wanted. They've also got pretty decent poise. I'm thinking it sucks that it's minus one, so I don't know. There's really nothing we can do. Same goes for defense. We got Bean and Jones on the top pair still. Sider's playing with Recky actually on the second pair, and Branch I have with Mickelrath. Reason being, if you have Branch on the second pair, it's a minus three uh, for Recky and Mickelrath, which is pretty rough. And Recky's only one below Branch drum plus. He's only 20, so low elite 
second pair, I think like he could have a really good season and possibly grow a ton and maybe even become a medium elite defenseman, which would be really nice for us. So our special teams here, you can see the first power play unit is pretty stacked. I mean, all 90 plus essentially. The second unit though is getting plus three. They're solid. Four man power play there looks good. Penalty kill, three man penalty kill. The only one that's actually negative is the second unit three man penalty kill, which isn't too bad at all. Goalies here, of course, Askarov, so the starter, 88 overall, so I think he's actually gone down twice. I want to say it was a 90, then an 89, down 88, but still not too bad. Comrie backing him up should be fine. So, obviously, you know, the cap is a real thing, and it definitely hurt us this summer, but I think we, you know, made it out okay. AHL team here. Gunther, I'm thinking, should make the NHL next year. Pere even possibly could, or he's just like an AHL guy for us. Gru, unfortunately, never really panned out, 24-69. Someone to McIsaac, I think. They just didn't play well enough in the AHL to really get that growth. Uh, Ninamaki, though, 79. He actually could have been in the NHL for us, and it might have been a bit better because he's a defensive defenseman. But And you know what? I'm looking at this right now. I'm thinking maybe I'll call him up, and then I'll actually trade away Mikkelrath, who we signed for like $2 million. So then we'll have a defensive defenseman. I can play Bransom still in the third pair. We won't get the minus two. We could actually use that extra money to hopefully get a slightly better third line center. So right now guys I'm offering San Jose Mikkelrath for a second round pick. If you remember we actually have a third rounder to sign him so it's actually still working out well for us. He's pretty good but again just doesn't really fit and I think the guy in the AHL is actually worth calling up. Let's see what the Sharks say. Trade accepted. We're calling up Nimaki. So there we go. Worked out well. And so as you guys can see after the trade our defense looks a lot better now with the line chemistry. I moved Branchman back to the second pair of Sire to get a plus one and then Reki and Nimaki actually get a plus one so it's better actually having him because he ends up being an 80 opposed to the other guy who was 80 gain minus two i think making him a 78 so i like this we actually have a bit of cap space now too about three million so can try and upgrade frederick now if i can't find anything just wait till the trade deadline and like i was saying guys i wanted to try and upgrade our third line center position kerfoot here's on the block with seattle i feel like he'd be a really nice upgrade 31 years old 84 overall does have the third line role good passing good skating good shot he's pretty much like the all-around third line center we're looking for Frederick obviously is a bit more just physical, not that offensive. Adding Rakos here, he's actually our worst uh, elite potential goalie prospect. 19 years old, only 51 overall. We just drafted him in the fifth round. So I'm also asking for a second round pick back. Not on the block, but the value is pretty equal. I think even a bit on our side. So good chances we'll go through. Trade rejected. Okay, so the value is a bit off, they said. Um, honestly, I'd still be willing to take like a third rounder. Uh, looks like it's actually pretty heavily on our side. Maybe we try and get back third to fourth. Let's see what they say. And there we go. So third to fourth round pick for the guy we got with a fifth round pick. Upgraded Kerfoot. Not too bad. And so our third line is now Krebs, Kerfoot, and Mantha, which I think looks a lot nicer. And obviously too at the draft we lost Bertuzzi, but he was only an 85. Kerfoot's one overall below him. So really our team's pretty much as good as it was last year. And I'm thinking right, hopefully like I was mentioning, can just take over the NHL. Also guys, I want to show you these stats here. So we have 96 offense, 90 defense, 86 goaltending. Hopefully that's good enough to win a Stanley Cup. I'll get started with the season sim here and hope for the best. So after the first month, guys, we're 8-1-1. One, one. Not quite as good as our 10-0 start last year, but, you know, hopefully this start actually pans out. And around December, guys, with a 23-13-1 record, the Canadians are insane. They're 12-point lead on us still, even though we're doing pretty well ourselves. So We'll get to the deadline, see what's out there, try and improve our team. Again, Stanley Cup's the final goal. Hopefully, at least, maybe make the conference finals this season. And a big trade just went down between Dallas and Ottawa. Dallas getting Logan Brown a third and a fourth, and Ottawa gets Josh Bailey in a third. So, maybe Ottawa's going for it this year. And never mind, guys. After I said that, I noticed in the division standings, Ottawa's in last place. So, that trade doesn't really make a lot of sense. And Arizona just traded Nick Schmoltz down 86 to Minnesota for a first-round pick and a prospect, Andrew Chuck there. So, kind of interesting. <laughs> I hate when they do this. Ottawa traded for Bailey to then flip him to Florida with Niederreiter for a first Pajot going back to Ottawa and Travis Hamannick. I'm not sure why teams like start flipping players. It's something but that didn't used to happen, but all of a sudden it seems to be, you know, a lot of people are having, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's an issue, but just like a weird strategy computers use where they flip players. So we have 80 points right now. We're looking pretty good heading towards the deadline. Canadians though, 90. Really hope we at least get second so we don't have to play them until the second round, even though doesn't make it really much of an easier matchup playing them whether it's first or second round. And Seattle just traded Frederick and Lazar for a couple second round picks. Seems like a pretty good return, honestly, for those two. Like, we had Frederick and Lazar only being a 79. Like, that's actually pretty nice. Um, high and again, Calgary's trying to give us now. So, at the deadline here, 42, 18, and 2. Like, we're killing it. And somehow, Penguins have 90 points um, at the deadline, which is ridiculous. What did the Canadians have? 
Avalanche there have 88, so they're also crushing it. Canadians 93, so like, I thought we were doing really good. We have a 12 point lead there on the Maple Leafs, but there's three other teams, they're just absolute powerhouses. Shane Wright, 66 points there in 62 games. I love seeing that. So uh, we'll take a look at the trade blocks, see what's out there. But I feel like our team is pretty solid. Now we do have a couple million cap space, potentially make a move. Looking through the lineup though, like we are, we're pretty solid. So not gonna do anything too crazy probably. All right guys, I'm trying to get a small trade here to upgrade our team. I'm actually flipping Kerfoot after giving the computer shit for flipping all their players. 84 overall centers is pretty solid. But McLeod here in New Jersey, making 2.8 million is an 86 overall center. He's actually got 50 points right now. Playing really good. His defensive stats there are really solid. A90 awareness, 91 face-offs. Uh, he's got 91 strength as well. So for us, he's kind of just like the perfect third line center. I'm also adding Astles there. He is our worst uh, medium elite prospect goalie. I feel like we've been doing pretty good at finding those gem goalies in the drafts. So hopefully we can keep it up. As well, we have the one in the AHL. It's actually already a 72 overall, which is really nice. And then we have the one we just drafted, 19 and 58. We literally don't need four. That's why we traded one already. And probably don't need three either. So it gives us a nice upgrade here, third line center. And hopefully that's, you know, McLeod plays PK for us. Maybe this is the edge we need to actually win the Stanley Cup. I feel like the Devils probably say yes to this. And trade is accepted, so there we go. So after that trade, guys, here's an update. Look at the lines. I like them a lot more now. Obviously, third line center is looking even paired with McLeod as well. They're getting a plus one. So essentially, that's where I'm like 84 to an 87 there with McLeod in that role. Also, just should make that line even more deadly. Defense hasn't changed, but obviously, they're all plus ones now. I've also got McLeod on the second power play unit on the left wing there, and they're also getting a plus one. They were getting a plus three, but he's better than Krebs, so I think that's okay. He's also on the second unit penalty kill there. Both getting plus ones now. And he's on the second three-man penalty kill, which are both at zero. So it really just makes our roster evened out. All the chemistry is nice. Hopefully, this is the Stanley Cup winning team. Let's find out. And a couple of days after the trade deadline, guys, Blue Jackets here fire their head coach. I haven't really seen where they're on the standings, but clearly not doing good. So at the end of the season now, guys, with a 58-20-4 record, 120 points. We actually passed the Montreal Canadiens. That trade from McLeod was insane. So we win our first game, lose to the Senators. Uh, there's a couple losses in there, but we went on a crazy win streak. I think it was after the OT loss to the Leafs. We won, what is that, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 straight. A shootout loss to the Edmonton, then another win against the Avalanche. So if you also count the OT loss there, we actually, we didn't, what, what is that? Let me do some math right now. All right, guys, so we went 16 games without giving up a point. The last time was a regulation loss against Dallas. After that, we won every single game except for an OT loss to the Leafs and a shootout loss to the Oilers. Like... That is un that's insane. 30 points in our last 16 games. We passed the Montreal Canadiens. We're doing unreal. Still didn't win the conference though. The Penguins there, I think, had one or two more points than us. Wright actually finishes just above a point per game, which is awesome. Hopefully it continues to grow. I can't believe just how good this team played at the deadline. Usually like that should do worse at the deadline. Tavares still at 82 points, still at a point per game. Raymond one under, so not quite as good as that one year where they all had like mid 90s, but still pretty solid. Devars is actually down to 87, but I mean, point per game for 35 year old, we're not gonna complain. Larkin at 71, Brink 64 is pretty solid. Mantha, McLeod, Valino was hoping for a bit more than 57. He had like 50, what was it? Yeah, last year he had 51 on the third line, getting second line ice time. I was, I was thinking he would have done a little bit better. Being there at 54, Jones 51, pretty solid for defense. Krebs there with 43, Branch jump 31. So overall, not too bad. Goaltending here, Askarov is a really nice record. 904 to 2.69. Comrie, for some reason, his stats are always better. Actually, his record's insane. 21 and 4 is an 80 overall. He should probably jump in rating, even though he's a backup, like based on those stats. It's kind of nuts. Um, AHL here, Pere 75, Gunther 59. I was hoping he had like a big season. I really want him to make the NHL next year, but I mean, he's going to be definitely, he'll definitely make it eventually. He's not going to be like McIsaac and Bust, but I was hoping, you know, really turn into a solid player for us. So I guess there is still time. McKinnon Matthews, 103 each. McKinnon actually has an extra goal there at 44. Caulfield, 98. 8 overall, but his shot's ridiculous. 98 wrist shot accuracy. Aho, 98 there. Sprong, I still... What do you... Yeah, to an 89 overall, which is insane. Gensel on the ass as well. Holtz there. What is his rating? 92. He actually ended up being better than Rain, which is kind of surprising. Thought it would have been the other way around, but... He's playing insane on Pittsburgh. Perfetti there. Sveshnikov, so... Kind of like a new era here of players, honestly. Like, aside from McKinnon Matthews, a lot of new names. It's pretty cool to see. So, I'm curious where we finish the NHL. I noticed the three top teams in the Atlantic, all of 100 points. So, luckily, we got the division lead as Montreal and Toronto. That's going to be a bloodbath. We'll actually be playing Buffalo there in the first round, it looks like. So, entire league here. 
Pittsburgh did win it. So we lost the President's Trophy there by a point. Actually came down to, wow, the OT loss. I was going to say we had one more regulation overtime win. Same amount of wins, just an OT loss. Montreal third, Colorado, St. Louis, Toronto. So half the teams with 100 plus points in the Atlantic Division. That's not what we want to see. That makes the playoffs just so much tougher. Vancouver, their last playoff team. Both New York's miss it. Seattle misses it. I don't think they've made it still, which is kind of insane. Like the GM, the, the computer GM has no idea how to build an expansion team apparently. And last in the league, not Columbus, even though they fired their coach, Ottawa. Both them and Dallas, they have finished team with 69 points. All right, guys, so look at the Buffalo Sabres team right now. Even though they got the last playoff spot in the East, they're going to be a tough competition. They signed Dubois. I completely forgot that. So they have him and Eichel with Reinhardt on the first line. Like, 292s, that's tough. Now after that, they have Cousins and Skinner, which is pretty good second line. Furlan's kind of meh. Outside of Haynes here, their bottom six is also pretty average. So we definitely match up better. Dallin, best defenseman in the game right now. After that, the defense is pretty average though. And Seth Jones is a 92, so he's pretty much as good. And we have a lot better defense after that. Sorokin, they have a starting goaltender. Grice still playing here at 40 years old. 76 overall backup. I didn't even realize that. Kind of nuts to be honest. So... We can shut down Dallin and their first line. I feel like we're better everywhere else. Like we should be able to beat this team. Obviously easier said than done. We've just had no luck in these playoffs, but I have a different feeling about this team. Like, you know, I don't know. I like Troy Saddle, but him as like the franchise player, we wasn't happy in the playoffs, even though I, I wouldn't say it was his fault, but maybe this team, this new look, we're making it happen. So first period, we're playing Boston, not Buffalo. I'm gonna have to check Boston now. 2-1 uh, losing there, 3-1, 5-1. And you know what sucks too is that um, Dry Saddle's on Boston. So the two guys, the two big Freighton signings, they're the two wildcard team. And you know what guys, Buffalo was the last playoff spot. That's why they're playing Pittsburgh. Boston got the second last one, so that's why they're playing us. I just messed that up, but I guess it was cool looking at Buffalo there. So we'll check out Boston now. Wow, how much cap space did they have? They signed Dry Saddle. It was 11.9 million, I believe, and they signed Cow to 12.3. Who I still don't understand how he got that contract. 88 overall. He's six below Dry Saddle. Like how many? He didn't have an insane amount of points last year. I don't think. No, he had, he had 87 points the year before. 88 overall, and he got that much money. I don't understand how that happens. But I mean, that's on that's on them. Like bad signing, and the fact that they had enough though to get him and Dry Saddle. Watch, I bad both dry size. is going to beat us now with Pasternak. That first line's nuts. Luckily, though, like, look at the depth. It doesn't exist. They have no depth. Defense, they have McMacvoy. No depth after that. So they just went top heavy there. Georgia has their start at 83 with a 72 backup. Like, are you kidding me? Our team is so, so much better. If dry size was signed with us, too, and, like, let's say they had Tavares, it wouldn't even be close. Although Tavares did play really well. He had a point per game. So, all right. <laughs> we... I'm actually rattled now after looking at their team. We should not have lost that first game at home, 5-1. to one. Hopefully, we can bounce back here. We have better team on paper. We were better in the regular season. Here we go. <sighs> Drysaw gets 2. We're down 3-1. Coil gets 2. We're down 5-2. to two. Drysaw gets the hat trick. <sighs> this, this is making me depressed. Are you kidding me? All right, here we go, guys. Game 3 in Boston. Maybe... For whatever reason, the away team's going to have a bit more luck. Then hopefully, we can switch that game 7. All right, 2-1 lead. Finally, Larkin Brink for us. Trisal gets 2. He hates us. Like, what is happening? Third period. We get 2, and then Pasternak, game winner. I don't know what is happening. Like, they have no depth on their team. Absolutely none. They have, like, high 70s, low 80s from the second to the fourth line. Our third line is better than their second line. Our defense is better. Like, our number one in Jones way better than McAvoy. Everyone else is better. Goalie's not even close. Our backup's almost as good as their starter. Our AHL starter is better than their backup. Ugh. All right, here we go. Game four. Maybe reverse sweep. Miracle. 2-2. Two, two. Raymond gets two. He's, he's fired up. Come on. There we go, boys. The cloud gets two. The trade deadline acquisition. We pull it off. <sighs> Have a chance. Game number five now. I mean, we literally won 10 straight or whatever it was at the end of the season. Didn't lose a point in 16 games. We can definitely win four straight. We're a good enough team. Game five at home. Dry sell again. For Tannen. All right, we just need one here in the third. Force us to OT. There we go. We get Brink and Raymond sawed for them. We need an OT hero. Come on. 
saw it again. I do not get this. It's like we're cursed or something. I thought maybe Dreisaitl will have the curse, but apparently not because he just beat us. I don't get it. And after the playoffs, guys, Florida here fired their head coach, even though they weren't in the playoffs. So kind of weird timing. Colorado, you might have seen there, wins the Stanley Cup. One of the six teams, whatever, that had 100 plus points, including us, but <laughs> we cannot make it out of the second round. We can't make it to the conference finals. It's insane. Ottawa there, first overall pick, LA second. Arizona third via Minnesota. That always hurts, trading away a top three lottery pick. So take a look at the playoff tree, see who Avs beat there. Raven played pretty well for us in the playoffs, six points in five games. I still can't believe, like, you look at that Boston team, we're so much better. I don't, we, we won one playoff game, like, what is happening? Wow, and Boston actually does a Cinderella run there from second line, like, they had one of the wild card spots all the way to Colorado before losing there. That's pretty impressive. They beat Montreal in seven, Philly in six. The best teams, actually, Pittsburgh there, got swept by the Flyers. Flyers fans would have loved that, because... You know, obviously there's a rivalry, and then the fact they get to beat them when they win the President's Trophy, kind of unreal. So take a look at the awards here, see what happened. Card with Stanley Cup, Pittsburgh Presidents, Individual Awards, McKinnon with the Art Ross, Hart though goes to Matthews, second straight year, McCarr gets to James Norris, four or five years, just basically call it the McCarr Trophy at this point, kind of like when it was the Lidstrom. Sprong gets the Lady Bing, Wall there with the Calder. I was actually looking at potentially trading Zadina for him, but I think he was like an 82 or something. I like our trade better for Bobby Brink. Olin there with the Con Smythe. Murray, though, gets the Vesna. Also got the William Jennings. Uh, Micelli? Michelli? Bill Masterton? He's probably made up. Uh, Dempsey, Oilers coach, actually got Jack Adams. Barkov with the Selkie. You could call this the Barkov. Four straight years. Matthews also gets Ted Lindsay with the second straight year. And then Cole Caulfield there. I didn't even realize with the Maurice Richard. So, obviously, Caulfield's a sniper. Colorado, great year for them. AHL here. I don't even think we made the playoffs. I totally forgot to check the AHL standings. Um, individual awards, Nick Paxton was in the AHL, he had the most points, it's kind of funny. Pilon, MVP, Karostin, that's most goals, or the outstanding rookie. Hickey, also <laughs> buried in the AHL, best defenseman. Huska, best goalie, Keller, MVP of the playoffs. Backstrom also got sportsmanship. Motko, community involvement. Huska, lowest goals again. So, I always find it funny when there's like a mixture of, you know, current NHL players in their prime that are now veterans playing the AHL, especially Backstrom, like that's pretty surprising. Um, hopefully it'll show us the retired players here in like a second. Uh, draft class, take a quick look at. Haven't really had a franchise player recently, and yeah, again, just looks like it's gonna be five medium elites. The last, you know, few years of drafts haven't been anything too crazy. So retirement here. I'm wondering. I feel like if Backstrom had the most points in the HL, he probably gonna retire at this point. Ovechkin retires though. 971 goals. Obviously beat Gretzky's record and still playing for us. And the fact he actually stayed 86 overall is pretty good. Stammer there retires so. Glad with Tavares over him. Kessel, Nick Backstrom does retire. Bergeron, also in the AHL. Eric Carlson, Couture, Doughty. So Sharks are losing a lot of players there. JVR, Hornqvist, Radulov. Pretty much like, I don't know, half of the NHL right now that's currently, I don't know if you'd say in their prime, but maybe at the end of their prime is just retiring right now. It's pretty nuts. Um, take a look at the goalies as well. This Grice finally retire, I wonder. Rask there. It's a big time retirement. Same with Bobrovsky. Jonathan Quick with a free agent, 75 overall. Bishop, down to 75 as well. I mean, they're 39. Varlamov, Grice does retire. Neuverth, Nielsen, Condon. I don't know, guys. Like, all right, that's year seven. We have three years left here to try and win a Stanley Cup. I was hoping we'd be a dynasty. Oh, wow. Doughty, Carlson, Ovechkin, all coaches. I feel like Coach Ovechkin would be pretty cool. And what I was going to say, um, I wanted to be a dynasty, win like multiple cups. And. We're going to be lucky to get one. We have three years left to win a cup. We're going to be getting worse again this year. Like, two years ago was our best chance. This year was pretty good. Right up to a 93, though. So he's amazing. Now, the thing is... Raymond also went up by one. Now a 91. And Tavares, he went down two. Then he went back up one. Lino needs a new contract. He's going to get a lot more than 2.2 million. And we have, like, no money coming off. Or I guess Branstrom, who doesn't want an extension. That's probably not even enough for Valino. Krebs is going to want to raise. Recky's going to want to raise. Uh, Ninamaki, I didn't realize, was on a penning deal. He went up to an 81, but he's going to want to raise. <laughs> I don't know. We are in a tough spot here. Like, we're so good in the regular season every year and just can't put together in the playoffs. We're going to have to come up with something. I don't know what, but three years left. we got to win a Stanley Cup in at least one of them. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I'll leave that thumbs up. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.